this is the part 5 of AppSync and serverless series. Now in the previous episode, we particularly discussed how to connect to an existing AppSync API from a front-end. Now as for the front-end, we use a React front-end and we also use AWS Amplify library to connect to our existing AppSync API. Now this AppSync API was created using serverless framework. Now in today's episode, we are going to focus on how can we provide guest use access to AppSync API. Because this was a question that was uh, asked by Kando. Uh, he particularly asked how to handle unauthenticated users and also custom login. And today I will uh, mainly focusing on how to uh, do this part, how to handle unauthenticated users. Okay, so let's get started. So I have one slide. So this is about guest use access. And this is the part five of uh, serverless and AppSync series. By the way, if you haven't watched the previous episode, I will put it in the description so you guys can always catch up with the previous ones. So today, let's discuss how can we allow guest use access. Now, before we even think about guest use access, guys, one thing you need to remember is that AWS AppSync do not allow unauthorized access. That means uh, you can't make any API request to an AppSync API without having to get some sort of an authorization. So then how do we really provide this guest use access? Because we don't want them to uh, log into the application, right? That's the main thing about guest users. So that's where we are going to discuss different uh, ways that we can authorize our request to an AppSync API. Now, AppSync support four types of authorization methods. Amazon Cognito User Pool, OpenID Connect, API Keys, and AWS IAM. Now, in our application so far, we use the Amazon Cognito user pool. So there, uh, what happens is when a user uh, wants to log into our application, they will log in against the Amazon Cognito user pool. Then uh, they will get some JWT tokens. So those JWT tokens will be then used to authorize uh, their request to the backend AppSync API. Now, this is one of the standard way of authorizing request to an AppSync API. Next, we can also use any OpenID Connect uh, providers, for example, let's say Oat0, um, Facebook, uh, Google, you know, all these web binaries as well. You can use that. So there also you will receive some JWT tokens. Those tokens will then be used to authorize their request to uh, an AppSync API. So what is the difference between Amazon Cognitive User Pool and OpenID Connect tokens? Um, that is basically uh, we can associate some uh, user group related information. For example, in Cognito user pool, you can create multiple user groups like admin, user, customer, whatever. And then you can associate some IAM role um, so that each role will have uh, different types of permissions. So those tokens that is uh, generated when a user is signed in will incorporate some of these uh, group information. And when the uh, requests are being authorized at the uh, AppSync API level, then the API will use those uh, relevant permission to authorize requests. But with OpenID Connect, there won't be anything related to IAM a permission associated with it. So there won't be any notion of user groups or permission related to user group and so on. But uh, you might really want to uh, allow your users to log in with Facebook, but still again, want to associate some user group related permission. So in that case, you can use a Cognito user pool and federate the access to those third-party web identities uh, like Facebook, Code0, or it could also be corporate identities like Active Directory, ADFS, uh, that is connected through SAML2 protocol. I'm not going to discuss uh, in detail on that. If you need a separate video, let me know. I'll create one. So those are basically the main two ways that you can use uh, an identity provider to connect to an AppSync API. Next, we have two other ways, that is API keys and AWS IAM. Now, these are commonly used to provide guest user access. So what happens there is, uh, although users do not log in uh, to a particular IDP, uh, so they don't have to really sign in, but all of their requests will contain some API key. Now, I'm talking about this API key first, right? So they are in the headers of this request, we will have uh, some headers like X API key, and then we'll associate the API key that we have linked with our application. 
Now the problem with API keys guys uh, is that uh, the maximum duration I think is about 365 days. So after 365 days these API keys will be expired and then you can't actually reuse them as well. So you have to manage these API keys all the time. But uh, this is really good uh, if you are developing or oh, you have a public API that you will be explicitly managing these API keys. But today I'd like to talk about AWS IAM because AWS IAM uh, we can use it to provide uh, guest user access. How can we do that? There we are going to use another construct in Amazon Cognito. So far we used a uh, Cognito user pool but this time we are also going to associate identity pool with our user pool. So what is an identity pool guys? Well basically uh, there are two constructs uh, in Amazon Cognito, uh, Cognito user pool and also uh, Cognito identity pool. Right. Okay, I, will, I will add it to here because that makes more sense. Now the main difference between Cognito user pool and a Cognito identity pool is that we can associate an IAM role for an unauthenticated user in Cognito identity pool. But with Cognito user pool we can't associate an IAM role uh, with an unauthenticated user. So that's the main difference. So here what we use is we use Cognito identity pool and in the Cognito identity pool uh, we can associate two types of roles. One is an uh, unauthenticated role and also you guessed it authenticated role. Right? For these two types of roles we can define what are the permission for an unauthenticated role and what are the permission for the authenticated role. So if the user tries to access our uh, AppSync API as an unauthenticated user then this unauthenticated role will be associated with him and then he will uh, receive those permissions. But if he logged in then authenticated role uh, related permission will be applied. Now because of this very reason we can use this AWS IAM uh, with Cognito Identity Pool to provide access to our guest users. Okay so enough of the theory part and now I will show you how to do that using a small demo. Alright guys, so I open up the project that we've been working so far. Now if you haven't been following along, I will uh, put the GitHub link in the description so you can just uh, clone the code. And there we, we basically have two folders, backend and frontend. And uh, I have actually spin up the frontend, uh, that is the React application. Now, now in the React application, uh, in the app.js file, we are using uh, AWS Amplifier to add this authenticator component. Now you can see this is the high order function and when we are returning this app we are wrapping it up. So what happens is it is going to give us this uh, nice uh, login screen. So let me just uh, log in to uh, this application and here I have implemented one of the queries get book details. Now uh, let me quickly show you our backend as well. So backend we have spin up a serverless project and we are using AWS AppSync plugin to set up an AppSync API for us and the authentication type or the main authentication type is Amazon Cognito user pools. So all the requests that means these uh, queries uh, you can see I have implemented two one query get book by ID and one mutation create book. So those are the two uh, fields that we have implemented so far and let me quickly show you the get book ID mapping template. Now this is the get book ID mapping template. So we are using get item in the DynamoDB table behind the scene. And this is our GraphQL uh, schema. So in the GraphQL schema, so this is our get book by ID and it's going to return a book. And all these queries and these mutations will be using Amazon Cognito user pool authentication. So that's where we need to log in and then I will run this query. You can see there's a GraphQL request sent it to my backend and this is the data and we show the data here. So let's add guest user access. So let me sign out. So what happens if I completely take out this with authenticator high order component and also I will remove this sign out button as well because that doesn't make sense. Uh, if we remove the authentication and let me do a refresh here 
then I will only see this particular button. Now, if I try to click get book by ID, I get this error. There's no current user. Now, this makes sense because uh, the authentication type is cognito user pool and there's no current user. But how can we make our guest users uh, to access these type of queries? Now, in order to do that, uh, let's use AWS IAM authentication type. Now, here in my serverless YAML file, my main authentication type is Amazon Cognito user pool. Now, in addition to one uh, authentication type, we can add multiple other additional authentication type to an AppSync API. And the plugin also supports that. And there is this uh, certain attribute called additional authentication providers. So let me copy it from my GitHub. Well, of course, you can find this information in the plugin documentation, but I'm not going to go over there. Okay, so I have added this additional authentication provider and added an additional authentication type AWS IAM. And with this, our AppSync API will have support for both the Amazon Cognito user pool authentication as well as AWS IAM authorization. Well, it should be authorization really because uh, this attribute is called authentication. I tend to use this interchangeably. But uh, let's make our getbook by ID query to use AWS IAM authentication instead of Cognito user pool authentication. So how can we do that? That's very easy. There's a certain directive where we can use. And the directive is at AWS IAM. So let me just copy it here and I will add it there. So this will tell this getbook by ID query or this GraphQL field will be using AWS IAM. The rest of it, which we haven't added this uh, decorator, they will use the standard authentication type, which is uh, Amazon Cognito user pool. All right. Now uh, this query is returning a book. So this is the book type. Now we can tell AppSync all the uh, GraphQL fields, say book ID, title descriptions, will also be using AWS IAM authentication. So how can we do that? That's very easy. I can just copy this one. Then I can tell, okay, if it is a guest user who is using AWS IAM authentication, then return him the uh, book ID, title and description. And also maybe it, uh, image URL. But uh, let's say I don't want the unauthenticated users to view these four attributes. Then I won't decorate it with the AWS IAM. So when the book is written, only this attribute will be accessible uh, by an guest user. But let's imagine I want to uh, return all these attributes regardless he's a guest user or an authenticated user. And so in that case, I can either add AWS IAM decorate for all of these or I can just add it at the type level here. So I'll add it there because I want to return all this information even for a guest user. But uh, you can imagine, right, uh, how powerful this is. Uh, so let's say uh, for a logged in user, I want to uh, return even, let's say, price information. But uh, guest user, I, I will return only certain uh, information in a certain entity. All right. So the next step is to associate our user pool. Let me show you our user pool. If I go to resource section, so we created a user pool. So that user pool is, uh, here it is, Cognito user pool. And we need to associate this user pool with an identity pool. So as we have already discussed, only identity pool can have IAM role for an unauthenticated user. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, we need to create an identity pool. So in order to create an identity pool, let's follow a similar approach. I will go to Google, I will search for Cognito identity pool cloud formation because it's the cloud formation script that we are using i will select the first link here and that will take me to the cloud formation documentation for cognito identity pool which is this one and i will copy over this uh, yaml well uh, i will actually use it from my code because there i have already uh, created it let me just copy over this and come back here. Well, we'll add it at the end, paste it. 
So the logical resource name is Cognito Identity Pool. The type is uh, AWS Cognito Identity Pool, and this is very important. We need to set allow unauthenticated identities to true because we need to allow unauthenticated access for our users. So make sure it is true, and then uh, we need to add Cognito Identity Pool identity providers because uh, we are now going to associate this identity pool with our user pool. So there. Uh, our user pool will be a client uh, for this Cognito Identity Pool. So that's where we need to add the user pool client ID here. Now I'm using intrinsic uh, function ref and uh, Cognito user pool client, which is we have already configured previously. So this is our Cognito user pool client, guys. Now this client is used to access our Cognito user pool. Now, if some of these things are new, make sure you watch the previous videos then these things will be clear to you. Okay, so I use that uh, client ID here and then the provider name. So the provider name is basically Cognito user pool name. Um, so there again, I'm using this get ATT, get attribute uh, intrinsic function. And this time I'm referencing the Cognito user pool logical ID, which is our Cognito user pool itself. And then it has this provider name. So I access that. So we'll get the provider name. Then I will name my identity pool as YouTube Bookstore Identity Pool. Okay, good. So now we have an identity pool. But now if we go to the documentation, you should see there's another construct that is called identity pool role attachments. So let me open this up. Now this is the place we attach roles for our authenticated and unauthenticated users. At the uh, identity pool role attachment, we can see there is this role section. If I go to the YAML, the type is identity pool role attachment. Then we need to reference the identity pool ID and role mapping. Well, we don't really have to map any roles here, but this is very important. It's roles. Now if I just click on to this one, you can see the description says the map of the roles associated with this pool. Uh, for a given role, the key is authenticated or unauthenticated. Okay, so we can set some IAM role for authenticated users and unauthenticated users, and the value is the IAM role ARM. So let me go ahead and just copy this piece. I will add right above this one. Oh, before that, I need to add a logical ID. So let's say Cognito Identity Pool Role Attachment. Okay, I'll remove these uh, role mappings. Cognito Identity Pool ID. So I can use another intrinsic function. Let me just copy it from my code. So the intrinsic function is ref and Cognito user pool, Cognito identity pool. So that is going to return me the uh, identity pool ID. So what about roles guys? So here also, I will just copy it from here. Copy this and paste it. So I'm only setting the unauthenticated um, role because I only need an IAM role for my unauthenticated users. Authenticated users, they will of course use uh, Cognito user pool, user group related uh, permissions. So here, what I need to do is I need to reference an IAM role ARM. So let's go ahead and create a new IAM role. In fact, so what I'm going to do is I will go to this uh, Cognito customer IAM role and uh, let me just copy this and paste it right about here and I will name it Cognino, Cognito Unauthenticated IAM Role okay so this is the type of IAM role and the role name is YouTube Bookstore Unauth Role Guest Users so the assume role policy is not going to be different and here for the policies section, let's call it uh, YouTube unknown policy, unknown user policy. And then guys, we need to add the policy document. 
So where can we see an example? Well, there's, uh, there's a section for the authorization and authentication in AWS AppSync documentation. And there, if you go to AWS IAM authorization, then you can find some information regarding that. So the actions that we need to allow for this IAM role is AppSync GraphQL action. So what does that mean? That means uh, whatever the resource that assumes this role can uh, execute uh, GraphQL query mutation or GraphQL fields really. And here in the resource section, we will particularly say for which GraphQL API are we allowing it. And also we can further tell what is the GraphQL field that we want to execute this GraphQL operation on. So we can be very permissive. Um, let me find a suitable example. Now here you can see a good example. Let's further scroll down. I think this is a very good example. So here, let's uh, use this. I will use uh, the version is fine. 12, 12, 10.7. If it allow action, then it has to be AppSync GraphQL, not DynamoDB star. And the resource is basically the ARN of our AppSync API slash our specific query field. So let's see how to do that. I will remove this second effect block. Okay. So here, I need to get the ARN of our AppSync API. Well, we can use one of these intrinsic functions, but let me test it first. So, yeah, I'll just copy this over first. So, this ARN of AppSync, then it should be US West 1, and the account ID, account ID is, let's see, account ID, APIs. Then your GraphQL API ID, that is this one. Types, query, uh, the field is basically, let's see, the field is getbook by ID. So let's replace post with getbook by ID. I think this should work. Let me go ahead and deploy it. Stop the front end, I'll go to the back end. Clear, say let's deploy. All right, so the stack update is completed. So let's see if everything is configured as we need. So here in AWS console, I will go to Cognito. And this time I should be able to uh, view the identity pool. I will click uh, manage identity pool. Here we go. So these are books to identity pool. I will click into it. And then I will select edit identity pool. Okay, great. So this is our identity pool ID. And this is our identity pool name we gave. And this is the books to unknown role. So this is the role we added earlier. And if I go to authentication providers, I should see my Cognito user pool is properly configured. Very good. And this is the client ID of the Cognito user pool. Okay, so let's see if uh, this works when we attach it to the front end. So how do we attach it guys? So let me first remove all these files, close all these files and go to front end. And I will first go to index.js because we need to do a couple of changes here. Now here we set mandatory sign into true previously, but this time it has to be false because we want to allow guest users to log in. And we only configure the user pool ID, but now we need the identity pool ID. So there I will go to my code and this is the attribute identity pool ID and I will add that ID pool ID. I will easily copy it here. Okay, I copy it from there and paste. Okay, that should do. And then we'll go to app.js file. I already removed with authenticator, so there won't be an authentication screen. I remove the sign out button. 
but we need to do a little bit of change on the way that we make the GraphQL query. Comment it out. So let me go to my code. I will just copy this part. That's easier. Yeah. Paste it. Okay, here I'm still using API from Amplify library. GraphQL, instead of uh, GraphQL operation helper, I will just pass in the query separately. That is get book by ID, it's no change. And the variable, of course, it's the same uh, book ID, we pass it as a variable. And this is the most important thing, it's the auth mode. So now this request particularly have to use AWS IAM auth mode, we need to specify that. If it is API key, then it has to be API key. If it is, uh, let's say, Cognito user pool, it should be Cognito user pool. Okay, so I guess things are set to test. So let me do yarn start. Now this is the previous error page. Let's wait until my server is up. Okay, now I'll go ahead and click get book by details. And I see my GraphQL query. Oops, I got 401. It seems like my IAM role needs more permission. So it's a permission denied. So this is the IAM role that will be assumed by an unauthenticated user. And there we are using uh, this AppSync GraphQL. Let me just quickly check the documentation. AWS here and AppSync is too. Yeah, I think uh, we need to add the proper GraphQL API ID. So right now I have added the name here. So let me go to AppSync console and there in the settings section, now this is the AppSync API ID. Well, I will copy that and I will paste it here. Now I think this should work. Let's do a redeployment. All right, so the stack update is now complete. Let me go to our front end once again. Click get book by ID. There we go. Now I get 200. And I also got the data back. Perfect. So guys, I hope now you know how to do guest use access. Now here we hard coded the uh, AppSync API um, ARA, but we should probably use one of these uh, intrinsic functions to get this uh, ARM. So in order to do that, you need to go to uh, serverless configuration because uh, we are using this AppSync plugin. So now this is a question for you. Put it in the comment section. How would you add that intrinsic function to get the ARN of the uh, AppSync API? All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another episode.